Today, we are going to continue with the series of what the heck do I do with this? And today, we're going to be speaking exclusively about Conti crayons. Conti crayons are a hard pastel, and when you buy them, they are usually in tones of brown. You can get a four pack, they come in black, uh, dark brown, red brown, white. They all have fancy names too, so it's not just red brown, you know. But I'm not saying what their names are. Let us let it be a surprise. So we're going to do a still life real quick of some pairs. This is not going to be an elaborate still life because we're just going to go over the techniques of Conti crayons. So. Unlike the pastel video where there's a lot of um, uh, smudging with, you know, the super soft pastels, this is much more precise. So let me see if I can outline where my drawing space is. Oh man, look at that terrible rectangle. Whew. My favorite. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to do pairs. Well, maybe one pair, maybe two. I, don't, I haven't decided yet. So pears have this really funny shape. They're kind of like somebody that you meet at a, not even at a Cane's, but like at a Wendy's. And you're like, hey, don't I know you from somewhere? And the answer is always, yeah, I always see you here at this Cane's, I mean at this Wendy's. And you're like, I don't ever go to Wendy's. And the person's like, yeah, you do. I remember all faces. And then let's do the other pair. We're going to give them a friend. We're going we're gonna to make a pair. Ew, your neck is crooked. Okay. And the stem. I don't know what's up with these stems, but they're like the tree that, that bore these pears had extra stem going on for some reason. And then we have a horizon line. Let's do a short horizon line today. I don't normally do short ones. I usually do high ones. All right. So Conti crayon works a lot like chalk pastel, but to me it feels a little bit more like a mixture between um, a charcoal pencil and an ebony pencil because they are fairly um, smooth, but then they also have that characteristic um, charcoal smudging nature. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be a monochromatic drawing and I am doing this on blue tinted cardstock paper. Um, is there a reason why I picked blue? No, I just felt like using this blue. And so now I'm just laying in my shadows. I am not using my black yet. I am a firm believer in the darkest darks and the lightest lights are the last things you add to a picture. Um, because if you add them first, you know, you're kind of stuck with this big dark, dark spot. And if you, if you do it wrong, it's very hard to cover that up. It's, almost, it's impossible to do it in watercolor. And with paint or color pencil, you, you have to work really hard for kind of no reason. So, you know... To me, it's much better to use a, a fairly dark color, but not your absolute darkest color to start with your shade or your shadows, where your darkest shadows are going to be, and then build them up from there. All right, now Conti Crayons does the smudge thing, and another thing that you can use for smudging, which is actually a really nice smudger, is old strip of a t-shirt, and you can wash it and keep reusing it. And you're gonna get some smudging in there and you know, then you don't have the grease from your fingers touching anything. But notice how it doesn't smear as nicely or as uh, evenly as the, the soft chalk pastels. It's much, um, you can still see the texture of the marks and that's, that's one of the reasons I like Conti Crayon because um, I like that rough, that rough texture so you don't lose the fact that it is a drawing material, it is not a painting material. Can you make things that look like paintings with them? Yes. And, you know, that's cool. But you could also just draw with them. 
All right, so now on top of my darkest darks, I'm going to lay in my middle tones. Now I know this doesn't look that different as far as contrast wise. It's going to because I'm gonna layer some darker darks back over this to blend it all out. And it'll hopefully make more sense as I go along. I kind of feel like these pairs aren't, it's like they're in the same room, but they don't really like each other. Maybe they're, they used to be friends, but they're not. Maybe they used to go out and now they're like, well, we're gonna just be nice to each other in front of the kids. God, that sounds so sad. What's wrong with me today? I don't know. All right, so, oh, need more. More, more, more. Shade, 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 shade. And then I'll come back with my cut up t-shirt, smooth it out. So similar techniques to the chalk pastel. Um, you could use hairspray to bond this to the paper and it's what I should be doing. But I don't have any hairspray because I can't find my Aquanet. I don't know if I lost it or if I threw it away or I don't know. So now I'm gonna put my, start putting my darkest darks in there. And because it's, it's Conti crayon and because it's fairly stiff, you can get really nice tight lines. And it, you know, they're not really gonna move. They'll, they'll move a little bit, but the, a lot of it is gonna stay exactly where it is. Um, Conti crayons and the use of, uh, of like sepia sketching is really old. It, you know, they were doing things like this during the Renaissance, their sketchbooks full of stuff like this. And of course, the pigments that this is made out of have been around for a long time because they're earth tones. And earth tones are, you know, essentially the oldest pigments because they're the easiest to manufacture. They come from clay and different um, different dirt looking minerals. I kind of feel like I just messed this part up. I'm okay with that though. Just keep going. I should rename this channel Just Keep Going. But then that sounds like a motivational speaker kind of channel and I don't really want to take any of their shine because you know, when I think just keep going, I think like trauma or something terrible has happened, not keep drawing even if you think it looks bad. Not to say that this isn't nice and positive, but I don't know. I feel like I'd be taking someone's, someone's hustle. Oh, great, that does not look anything like I wanted it to look like, but I'm okay with it because I'm just gonna go over it with white. Now, white, is just like the chalk pastel and the new pastel and that it's very vivid. But unlike the soft chalk pastel, you're, you're not going to get a super blendable soft mark. It's, it's gonna blend, but it'll still have uh, a lot of texture. And this is even more so if your paper is textured. So notice again, I am simply scribbling and sketching. I am not trying to make this a painting or a perfect artwork. I'm just trying to get this idea down. And this is what Conti crayons are good for. They usually come in like a little pack like this. Um, different brands have them and a four pack like this. And you can put them in your bag in a sketchbook um, kit. And they normally do come in art supply kits when you know you get them for your birthday or Christmas or whatever. And they're great to take with you wherever you're going because if you see something, you're like, oh man, I'd love to paint this later, but you don't have a, you know, you don't have a chance to capture it. Um, this is a good way to do it. And I know people are mostly thinking, well, I could just, I could just use my phone. And yes, you can use your phone to take a picture of whatever it is you want to draw. But the problem with that is, is that the photograph doesn't necessarily capture how you felt about what you were looking at. It just captures what the light saw. And those are two very different things, even though they sound very similar. 
And that is because when humans look at something, you're not just looking at what's there. You're also looking into your memory to access how, you know, it, it relates to the rest of your life story. So it's not so simple as, oh, it was a duck on the side of the road. It's like, well, if that duck represents something that's important to you, it's going to have more significance. And if you just take a photo of it, um, you might lose some of the way that feels. And that's why painting and illustrating is still so important to this day because it's, it's emotionalized photography. Not photography, it's emotionalized image capturing. And yes, you can do that with photographs too, but the people who are doing things like that, they're not just snapping the picture quickly. There's a lot of planning that goes into those shots because you know when you capture something with light, it's not necessarily gonna be what you feel it should be. And like, believe it or not, this is almost finished. Like that quick, you know, and you have a, a passable little still life for maybe some studies. Maybe you were at a restaurant and you saw this and you, you really wanted to jot it down so you could draw it later. Um, I do this all the time. I'm in places and I just quickly bust out a sketchbook and start drawing. And it's not because I'm trying to be pretentious. It's because I saw something that moved me in some kind of way. And I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet. But, you know, it's always good to have these things available to reference. And that keeps your art making fresh instead of becoming stagnant and very bland. If you keep being inspired by the world around you instead of, um, you know, instead of just capturing it with a photograph and never revisiting it again. Some people do revisit their photographs, um, but I think a lot of people just end up having a camera feed with like a million photos and they don't even know where to start. And so this is, this is an answer to that. And yeah, I think this is almost done here because this is looking fairly decent. Good job, pair drawing. Okay, so quick pair sketch. Um, try it out, see how you like it. Crunchy crayons. <laughs>